Hi, thank you for joining us. We're going to have a, a wonderful discussion on active and passive learning. I'm Evelyn Schwallenberg. I am the co-director for the Topki program. Thank you for joining us. So first I'd like to start with I have no disclosures. I have no um, uh, commercial uh, associations or conflicts of interest. So today what I have in mind, what I'd like to accomplish at the end of this presentation is that you as a participant will be able to talk about principles of adult learning and I'd like you to identify and hopefully apply, uh, actually use some great uh, different options in making your uh, interactions with students uh, more active. So I'd like you to do first to start to think about how are you involved in medical education? Are you working in years one and two? Are you working in three, four, or out in postgraduate training? And I think that's important to kind of think what is your level of involvement, because then you think about what are your options in being really uh, making your sessions active. So with that, thinking of uh, starting your goals, beginning with the end in mind, you think about really it's about getting your learners to learn. You want to see that light bulb go off. And that's really very uh, supportive of us as educators. But so you have to think about that and how do you achieve that end goal. We also want to think about what are your goals for yourself as, a, as an educator, um, how you might want to grow and change. So what I want you to do is take some time out here. You're going to pause this video and, and really think about, write down how a few sentences or phrases how did you learn in medical school? What was your predominant learning environment in years one and two and three and four? And we're going to come back in just a moment and talk about that. Okay, now that you've had a few minutes to think about that, let's, let's really talk about, um, as you think about what with some of those things, where did you learn best? And most of the time, you know, traditional schools in, in presentation of medical curriculum over the last 100 years has really been fairly passive in the engagement of years one and two. And really when you got out into three and four, it was much more engaged in patient care. And because of that, it was really active. And, and most of the time you ask the predominant response to that question is you learned the best in the clinical years. When you really got the chance to take that information that you had and apply it at the bedside, really supporting that idea of being active learners. And again, just reflecting on some of the common responses, we can all remember those lectures. Boy, the entire class, their eyes glazed over, presenters sitting up there reading off their notes, word for word off their slides. It was extremely passive and honest, probably didn't learn very much about that. And so I want to share with you one of my favorite quotes, and uh, you know, some of this still happens today, but I want you to think about this because this might be uh, something you have to reflect about when you're in, ready to do a presentation in a large group. So a lecture is a process in which the information is transferred from the notes of the lecturer to the notes of the student without going through the minds of either. I mean, that is really uh, not very active at all. Yes, active act of writing, but we haven't engaged the thought process. So we need to really think about how do we make those presentations dynamic. So again, thinking about engagement with patient care, you know, you have the opportunity to take that information that you knew, see it engaged at the bedside, you have a chance to talk with your colleagues about this, go back and read about it again, come back and discover new information on physical exam or laboratory data. All that can be uh, applied at the bedside, but I will challenge you to think that there's ways to actually apply that in, in other ways, not just at times when you're in, in the hospital and bedside. So again, when you think about active learning, again, share with you another, another wonderful quote is, you know, I hear and I forget, I see and I remember, I do and I understand. So it really supports the idea of being really active and engaging the information that we're presenting to our learners so they can use it in a uh, very applicable way. And adult learners, they build on previous experiences and they really want to know things at the time they need to know it. And we're able to kind of put that into new use. So one of the terms we often use in medical education is see one, do one, teach one. And as much as that's uh, a real cliche, it really is still applicable in today's world, especially when you start talking about competencies. We actually do see a lot, and, and we do. And most of our doing now is really in a controlled environment. Simulation, standardized patients, we're really assessing a learner's level of competency before turning them out to really be in direct patient care. So that's really important. And then many of times, just like you, you're here learning more about medical education, you want to be part of the teaching. So we know we become really good teachers, we're able to really have mastery of that knowledge. So I want you to think about some of those concepts as you think about how you engage in medical education. So some of the information about uh, how we learn, and adult learners in the literature, really talk about, you know, we really remember about 10% of what we read, 20% of what we hear, 
30% of what we see. So when you combine the two, 50% of what we see in here. But more importantly on this slide, I really want you to think about 70% of what we discuss, 80% of what we experience. So if you can create a learning environment, whether that be in years one and two, or three, four, or even in the postgraduate years, where you're actually engaging that information at the time that's needed, and having them discuss it and actually experience it, we're going to have a better learning outcome. I want to share with you Bloom's taxonomy, which is a lot of information about uh, educational learning. And so the, the chart on arrow on our left really talks about some of the old terms. And the one on the right really talks about our new terms. And you'll notice the difference are very subtle, but it's really important because it made them action words, action verbs, really talking about how we actively use or assess, apply this kind of knowledge. And that's important as you start setting up your learning objectives. You want to think about how you're going to have your learners demonstrate. How did they learn? This is, needs to be very, very dynamic and active. So again, beginning with the end in mind, what our desired outcomes overall is a competent physician. So how do we get there? We really have to think about creating an environment that's really active, challenging our learners to think, help them start to assimilate that clinical thinking, applying the information that you've just given them, and really having them build on existing knowledge, and giving them opportunity to practice. That's again where our simulation, our standardized patients are coming into play, develop you know, small group discussions. So when you think about the difference between adult learners and um, uh, children, uh, children really are building their, their situation, although their environments are evolving, tend to be very, they're very um, uh, early, they're, they're um, novices in their learning, they're fairly passive, they're really motivated by what they're going to get in the reward, it's the external rewards from, from their teachers and the system. But really adult learners are really motivated by some internal drive, really very affected by their peer uh, understanding and they want to be very active. Their desire is to be better. So when you think about uh, principles of adult learning, they really need to know what they need to know at the time. So that's, wh that's why you're watching this video. You are, might be engaged in medical education. You want to know that you're either doing it the right way, you want to do it a different way. You have a need to know, so you're here, you're watching. So hopefully you're going to then take the next step, apply some of the concepts we're talking about in your next uh, teaching environment. But that's important. You want to be active in the participation. That's why we're trying to model some of that with you stopping and thinking about some key points as we move along. And you want to apply it immediately. Hopefully you'll stop this video and go teach a class. Well, not sure about that, but you'll apply it hopefully in the near future. And it really needs to be a balance of skill level and uh, what you need to learn. It has to be at the appropriate level. Uh, and that's important as we set up our learning environments for our students. You have to understand if you're teaching year one and two, the outcomes that you're expecting from that should be at that level. So it's very important principles. And you can't talk about adult learning in this environment without talking a little bit about millennial learners. Um, the millennial learners really are a very interesting group. They really, as a group, like to create their own information. And that means that they really have access. They are incredibly uh, digitally connected. They're able to find information much quicker than we were ever able to do and from various sources. So they start pulling that information together and creating their learning environment. And we as educators help, have to help support that, help ask them to think the right clinical questions so they find the right answer and uh, develop really dynamic uh, situations where they're learning. So again, I'm going to stop, uh, ha ask you to stop the video here at this point and do yet another task as a group. So as an, I want you to think about design. What type of activity would you use in a classroom that would be active? And what kind of activity could you engage in the clinical realm that would be active? And we'll be back in just a minute to talk about that. Great. Now that you've had some time to think, let's do some sharing. I want to give you some general ideas of what the typical responses are. So teaching and instructional methods, really the kind of things that are used is role modeling. It's really very active. It's direct observation of our learners for us. And then lecturing. Lecturing and demonstration. Often to make it very active, you've tied it to reading assignments or maybe they've watched some videos. Maybe you're showing some videos in class or some web links. Um, it's really important to think about small group, large group activities. You can actually, in a very large audience, get small groups together. Maybe they're doing a pair and share. You're going to ask, go take a small group to look over a question and come back and share with the whole group. So that can really make things very interactive. 
you might model uh, a patient panel. Maybe you're going to have a simulation run in the room, or you're going to have small group simulation. You're really thinking about how what the learning outcome of that, and how do you engage those students into active learning, and then assess did they get the concepts that we're trying to get across. Those are very important. And of course, audio response system is very important, very helpful in a large group to understand where the thought process is. So now we've talked about some of the ways in which you can actually be active or pairing active techniques uh, in your learning uh, situations. Let's really look at active learning approaches. So the advantage is it's really uh, helps your students get to a higher level of cognitive learning. You know, they develop analytical skills and that's because they're building on uh, previous knowledge and they're having an actual opportunity to apply the current knowledge that's, that's new. The disadvantage is, is it takes a lot of time. It can be much more time demanding and resource intensive. Uh, you know, you can sometimes limit the amount of material that you can cover. But part of our goals is really to educate lifelong learners. So it's not always, yes, everyone has to have a baseline amount of information, but we're trying to build lifelong skills so they can take this type of technique and approach and apply it to anything that comes along in their professional career. Thinking about lecturing, again, the good idea, the, the advantages of lecturing is you can get to a large group uh, of participants at once. So it's, it's very effective as far as financial for supporting uh, educational endeavors. But again, the disadvantages, as we just talked about, that you really only uh, obtain either 10 to 20 percent of what's presented because of the lack of attention. So if you're able to engage really active um, activities during that presentation, you're going to be much further along. And then there's some discussion of flipped classrooms, where students are actually engaging in that information prior to coming to class. Then when you get into class in the large group, you, you're really, again, activating, going back to clinical questions, seeing where they are, assessing on those, on those knowledges. So small groups, great way to be interactive. They are very um, way you can have peer interaction. They're self-directed. You can really get some self-assessment happening. And you can get students actively involved in really you know, comparing and contrasting uh, different concepts. But the disadvantages is they can be very faculty resource intensive. You know, and sometimes you don't have control always of what's actually covered. If you're going to be a facilitator, it's trying to direct them down the right path. I mean, that takes some skill. But, you know, it's really uh, very important that uh, facilitators have a strategy. How do they go about you know, keeping students on track? Uh, but it's an excellent way to be very active in their learning. So as we come to the conclusion of this presentation, I want to really encourage you to think about some ways that you can uh, identify and actually apply some active learning approaches in your learning situation, whether that be in the classroom, small groups, or at the bedside. You can mix and, and combine multiple approaches. Uh, and it doesn't have to always be at the same time, but if you come back in a short period of time, it's very applicable for you to understand where your learners are at and understand where their next level needs to go. So in summary, I hope we were able to discuss uh, adult learning uh, principles at this point, and you've really been stimulated to identify and apply some great learning, uh, active learning techniques in your next learning engagements. Thank you so much.